Hello, Bumpy McSquiggums here. It's time to finally start up on the Risen series. That's right, this is the original game Risen from Piranha Bytes and Deep Silver. And it is a, well, it's your classic free to explore kind of open world RPG, so I'm not really going to go into it too much. It's by the people that brought you all of the Gothic games except the fourth one, and, well, I'm going to hop right in and get going on it, so game we're gonna start a new game and here we go this is one of my favorite RPGs now as much as I could praise and laud how amazing this game is and everything else which I, I might do from time to time keep that in mind I will be quiet during the cutscenes by the way so if I just cut out for any random reason that is why I will try not to interrupt the story flow so for longer than humanity remembers the gods ruled Humanity served as slaves, but life never remains in balance. Power passed to man, and man banished the gods from the world. But something was released. Something older than man has risen. Given their freedom, humanity must fight for survival. Some cling to safety, others fight. It is a time where a man's choices define him. So that happened. Apparently that ship was made of Legos and the t three pieces fell apart. So, I don't know. Alright, so for all the good of this game, and there is a lot of good, I mean, exploring and doing different things, you're going to actually get a lot out of it. But, the one big downside, and it's a pretty big downside, is unfortunately the combat could be better. Now, it's improved over the years from, well, I feel it's improved from some of the gothic games, but a lot of people... A lot of people felt the Gothic games were actually spot on and they liked the combat, but I always felt that was one of their weaker things. Their combat mechanics, not all that fantastic. Now, I'm not going to talk to the passed out woman laying there because, well, <sighs> I'm going to do that behind... Cl no, I'm kidding. Um, that will start a quest that I am not ready to stall just yet. So what we're going to do first is we're going to kind of wander around on the beach, pick up stuff in the water. Now. One of the really weird things is the fact that you can actually jump in the water. I know. It's shocking. I agree. But, th if that wasn't weird enough, the even weirder part of it is you actually move faster while jumping in the water. So, yeah. So, you just walk around basically and collect some stuff at the very beginning. There's going to be some stuff to fight and some things that are hidden that you can find. I'm going to try to find most of the good hidden stuff here at the very beginning of the game. That way... And if anybody else decides, hey, this game looks pretty cool, I want to pick it up and see, they'll at least have a, a eh, relatively decent start. There's a compass in the bottom right, you have your health and your uh, mana potions. Or not potions, I'm sorry, bars in the um, bottom middle of the screen, but you can add potions to your hot bar, as well as other random things. Oops, sorry guys. All right. What? So we opened um, three clams, and it looks like we got one pearl out of the three. It's not bad. Or mussels, I guess they are. Well, technically clams. So I'm going to kind of wander along the edge. I know there's a body over there somewhere that actually has a pretty decent weapon, well, comparably speaking. And that is why I've also not equipped... See, it's got the hunting knife. I've not actually equipped um, the item that I found, the sturdy branches or the clubs. So the clubs do 8 blunt weapon damage. The stick does 10. And we're going to go with, unfortunately, neither of those are good enough. So we're going to go with the Blade of Ten. And there we go. So now we actually have ourselves a hunting knife. And I know where there's one more hidden treasure. 
and we're going to go actually do that. And then we'll see and hope and pray that my combat abilities and prowess in this game have improved. Because, well, i got to say, this game requires quite a bit of concentration and more than a little focus. Because it's all about timing, dodging, hitting, parrying, blocking. It's just, you have to be on point. So if you're off a little bit, it makes things quite difficult. So, you can parry attack like that. I, I don't know if I've ever been that good at parrying attacks, to be 100% honest. Ooh, we got some rum. I actually missed some of this stuff before. I got some grog, some mussels, another gold coin. So we're just going to continue to gather up some goodies here. I'm not going to go too far into the water or anything like that. If you try to escape the island and go out into the sea, you will get picked up by a giant leviathan-looking creature, this big worm that is very unhappy that you were there. Alright. So I am trying to bait him. Oh, didn't mean to jump there. Alright. There he goes. He attacked. And bam. Sidestepped him. Sidestepped him again, and bam, down he goes. We are victorious. The hungry sea vulture is no more. And that's kind of how combat works. You have a lot of really easy ways of jumping around and moving when you're in combat. You can sidestep left, right, and back. You can parry. You can block. If you get a shield, you can block a little bit better. And as, as luck, happenstance might have it, we'll say luck. As luck would have it, I know where there is a shield. All right. Crazy sea vulture. If you can back him into a corner, generally you're in a oops, pretty good position. Because they can't really dodge back or parry or anything like that to you. Now the animals don't necessarily parry, it's the people that do a lot of parrying, blocking and such. But yes, I did take a little bit of damage there. The bird hit me as he backed up a little further than I was expecting. Alright, so, if you randomly explore places, you are going to find secrets hidden around, which is quite nice. There's some mushrooms right here that I actually didn't even know the mushrooms were here, but I did know there was a shield, and a rusty sword, and a small healing potion. So, the rusty sword's not as good as the hunting knife, though you would think it would be the opposite, but it's not. However, we will equip the shield, and now when we whip out our weapon, bam, we get a shield that we block with. What? So, that's much nicer, much easier to use. And all over the place, the vegetation does kind of blend in with itself, so it's something you'll just get used to as you go. Which things you can actually pick up, which things you can't. I think I'll enter this side this time. Normally I enter from the back side of this uh, place, but I think I'm going to go in through the front door. And we're going to go and assault a gnome hovel. The gnome hovel will be sweet, sweet, nice, and quite fun, and I might end up getting owned. There's no way to be 100% certain, but we will give it a shot. Well, at not getting owned, actually, but either way. All right, so there's a gnome. He's not super happy. Oh, and he already dodged, and he hit me once. As you can see, we are in a kind of an interesting spot there. Now, there's a few things that I don't like about the combat beyond just the ordinary here. And that is that you don't necessarily get to twitch slaughter them, so they can usually interrupt you right in the middle of your combo, which is quite unfortunate and very unpleasant. So I'm sure you can imagine. But overall, that went too. That went too. Nah. It went pretty decent. It didn't go too too bad. It went. Eh. I don't know. Too awesome. I was thinking of going like a like a surfer dude there, but eh, I I, I decided against it. All right, so. Basically, from what I recall, every time you kill something that has a weapon, it drops the body that you can loot, which I guess is fine. So you can loot the body, and you can actually also usually pick up the weapon they had in their hands. So we kind of got owned there a little bit, so I'm going to gobble up some food. It's going to be delicious, and I'm going to enjoy it. We did get a bunch more mussels, so we're going to actually open all of them up, and sadly none of them had anything in it. And with that... Uh, we'll get a few more hit points from the the apple, and I suppose we could eat the turnip as well, even though it looks more like a carrot than a turnip, it's okay. And now we can loot the chests that they were guarding. We can steal that treasure, and it is going to be delicious and sweet, sweet, nice. And there we have it. We have looted the first treasure chest. There is a lockpicking thing that happens later down the road. I don't remember how it actually works, or if there's a mini game, or what the deal is with the lockpicks. But when we come to that, we will deal with it at that point. 
I know you have to learn prospect. There's a lot of things that you have to learn in this game uh, that you don't inherently know like in most games. So that's kind of a bummer. Alright, so I'm going to try to moita him. And I've done so. Oh! Couldn't get my weapon and my shield up in time. And he blocked, but it didn't matter because we dealt with him and took him out. Now we're just going to loot everything. Generally it resets your uh, cursor to uh, right on top of the loot all button or take all button. So even though there's no like you can press R or something like uh, the more popular or more known. I suppose this game didn't actually get super popular. So yeah, the more popular RPG games, they usually have like a R is take all or E or whatever the case is. This one just kind of recenters your cursor on the take all button each time, so that works. So it's just basically a double click to loot everything. Alright, so we will loot the rest of these chests. We got, it looks like some claws, some teeth, a bone, some more gold. So overall, this is not bad. Now I will tell you, the first time I ever played this game, I died on my very first gnome. I didn't know how to do combat very well. I'm still not great at it. I'll get better, hopefully, as things progress, but I really didn't understand what I was doing. It took me a long time to even get halfway decent at this game. So hopefully I remember most of what I learned. And disregard the plop plop sound. That would be my puppy running into the room going, What's going on? And I'm like, yeah, I can't talk to you right now, dog. Why not? I think she's doing something bad. She usually does. She's not always the best dog. Well, she might be the best dog, but she usually gets herself into trouble. So there's another rusty sword there. Some bolts for a crossbow and some lockpicks. So, eh, overall not too bad. Healing herb and then this weird blob on the wall here. This is iron ore, but I knew about prospecting. we don't know about prospecting, as he alluded to right there. So, unfortunately, we cannot mine. I also believe that we do not have a mining tool. Now, there should be a wolf around here somewhere. There it is. And we shall slay the wolf. And it's a hungry wolf, so eh, it's okay. It is okay. We're going to gather up all the goodies over here. Looks like some empty bottles and other random things. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Okay, sorry about that, guys. All right. Um, okay, so we went in the cave. Now we're just going to basically backtrack, and we're going to pick up our chick off the beach. She's laying there like, oh, no, I can't watch the show. What am I going to do? And I'll be like, yeah, I'm here, baby. I will heal you and keep you alive and fight all sorts of horrible creatures. Yeah, I don't know. My, my, my deep uh, manly voice there kind of eh, didn't really work. It's okay. It is okay. Well, that wolf looks like he's not that hungry. I don't know why he's still considered a hungry wolf. He's going to be a dead hungry wolf in a second. And bam, down he goes. And victory! Alright, so... Um, there's a couple things you can do at the beginning of the game. We're not quite... We're at the beginning of the game, I realize. But we're not quite to the point that I'm talking about. You have a few options of what to do and how to go about things. Ooh, ship guard. Sweet. Um, I'm probably going to do the same thing I did in my original playthrough, just because I like that choice better. Like, it, it would fit me out. Like, I wouldn't go with the crazy uh, mage guild thing. Now, I don't know if that's going to nerf me for magic or what. But as it stands now, it's... Oh, I hate those things. Those sting rat things are the like the devil when it comes to combat in this game. I hate them. I hate them so much. See? It's, oh, they're just so terrible to deal with. I hate them. They just own me. I, it's one of the few things, even later in the game, I have such an issue with. A few times I've managed to get to the point where I was able to dodge them pretty decently, but... So basically, you're going to have a choice coming up, probably in episode 2, that you have to make where you want to go and basically start off the game. Because right now, it's kind of the, the story building part of the game. Oh, another bird. Alright. Let's go, bird brain. Alright, we managed to combo him down without him freaking out on us. I also think my one key is getting to be a little buggy. But... Who knows? Who knows? Alright, so I think we've done enough uh, exploratory uh, stuff. It is time for us to gather up the remaining herbs, or herbs as it were, laying around on the ground that we see, and then go to our chick, who should be off to our left just slightly, and then down the little cliff there. 
And yeah, we should be good to go. All right, so we're back on the beach. Let's talk to her. She's still breathing. Sarah is still breathing. 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 She's breathing, guys. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. But I think I drank half the ocean. Do you remember much about what happened? Just that strange man from the Inquisition. And the storm. He sailed us straight into it. And then he... He vanished. The ship must have capsized and we got washed ashore. Looks like the poor devils over there weren't as lucky as us. Any idea where we are? No. Maybe it's another island. We should get off this beach. This wreckage could draw looters and they don't like survivors. Good job you're armed. If you're ready, we should make a move. Let's look for a way inland and find some food and fresh water. I am ready. Shall we go? I'm ready. Shall we go? No time like the present. There must be a path somewhere that leads inland. Hmm. Let's look for one. Careful. I thought I saw something move in the trees. Who knows? Get ready. Draw your weapon. All right. Well, let's see. Where is there a pad and a pencil? I will draw my weapon, but I, I really think using my weapon or removing it from my back because it magically floats there somehow. It's pretty cool. Anyway, guys. All right. So we're going to move forward. Now, the big difference between Risen 1 and Risen 2, well, there's actually several differences, but the thing that I, I guess it turns some people off People always want new things from different developers, you know, they're like, oh, you made this great series, you made, you know, several games in it, blah, 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 blah. Hey, why don't you do something different? We're tired of seeing the same old thing. So then they go with Risen 2, and they're like, all right, well, we have this medieval fantasy world with Risen. It works, it fits together pretty nicely, you know, everything's decent, and it's, yeah, it's a pretty good RPG. All right, well, we're going to continue with that, but instead of what we've, you know, grown accustomed to, what we're used to, we're going to go pirates. We're going to get rid of magic. Do you see those torches? There must be people nearby. Do you think we should head for where the torches are? I do. I do think we should. So they're going to do away with magic and all sorts of stuff in Risen 2. So it's quite different from this game, so I'm not entirely sure if I'm ever going to be very good at the game. I only played it briefly right after I beat this game, and, well... Coming from this, going to that, it was such a different game that I'm like, well, you know what? I'm going to have to come back to this at some point and learn it because it's almost like a completely different game. So, this is going to take quite some time to get through. I realize that and I I don't really ugh, I don't really apologize for the length. I am totally blind sometimes, guys. Ah, aha! I sidestepped the second attack deal with it. Alright, so we're a little banged up. We're a little worse with the wear. Things do kind of jump out at you sometimes too. Wow, that sting rat wasn't probably the most inconspicuous, but I totally didn't see him. And I think those are the things I have the hardest time seeing, because they kind of blend in with the ground. Because they're like a brownish dark color, and it's just, well, like a lightish brown color, sorry. And it just kind of blends in with the scenery a lot, so... Yeah, made things a little difficult for me. Look, it's a house. It looks abandoned. I wonder what happened here. Something must have driven the occupants away. Whatever it was, it's certainly not warming me to this place. Let's take a look around. We might find something useful. You have a look inside, and I'll keep a watch out here. I'll call if any more of those rats turn up. Anyone else noticed there was like a gigantic earthquake the whole time they were talking? They didn't miss a beat. They just kept talking. They are like... Maybe there's somebody inside, you know, so it's fine. They didn't care. Yeah, well, not like, oh my gosh, what's happening? The world is shaking. Uh, nope, they don't care. Oh, well, whatever. We're just going to keep babbling away. It's fine. Earthquakes are going on. No big deal. Something could have driven them away. And then there's this giant earthquake. I, I don't know. I, I found a little irony. And, oh, it was a little funny. All right, so before we go immediately in the house, which I should be able to clear the house out and do everything I got to do there before I can break off this episode, or before I do break off this episode. Right, into the basic chest. We got some gold coins, a mana potion, a pixie hat, what? And a saw, which is totally handy for cutting wood. If that was a thing. I think there's a lot of useless tools in this game, if I recall correctly. Like, there's several, and you're like, all oh, right, and then you're like, that doesn't really do anything at all. Why is it here? Why does it exist? But it does. So there'll be several useless things that you pick up over time, but eh, in general it's not too, too bad. We're going to pick up a mushroom. We're going to kind of 
clear the perimeter of the house first. That's the goal. Clear the perimeter of the house and then move on. And water barrels are your friends. It takes a little bit of time, but eventually he washes himself up, takes a sip or two, drinks, and he feels refreshed. So usually it's like three or four, I guess. I'm not sure if it's chunks of health or percentage of health. I don't recall. All I know is we are fully healed. Well, ish. And we are refreshed and we are ready to go. But we're not actually ready to go just yet. We still have more stuff to cover. Ooh, there's a wolf over there. Well. He seems very complacent and he doesn't really seem to care that we're here. Hmm. He's a sad wolf. Wolves do combo. A lot of animals, creatures, um, sentient beings. Pretty much anything you fight, just about anything you fight, can and will combo on you. So if you block one attack, it doesn't necessarily mean you're open and ready for a second, like to, to counterattack. So you have to think, well, does this thing do 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 15, 37 attacks? What are we, what are we looking at here? What are we up against? So you always kind of have to gauge an enemy the first time you approach it. Or, you know, as you go through, you'll start figuring out, okay, this enemy does this, this enemy does that. And it won't be that big of an issue. But, eh. I would say take it slow, block, see what the enemy does before you... Oh, there goes the earthquake again. Before anything else happens. Alright, so we are in here. Alright, there's a chair, and there's another chair, and there's a simple now chest. teach me to pick locks? Now who can p teach me to pick locks? Well, there's a bed, and ah, there's a key on the ground. Well, keys, and there's some grog on the ground. And there's a broom, because sweeping apparently is important, I guess. I, I know, you gotta keep a clean house. Well, I have a key, so I'm assuming it goes to the chest, and it looks like it does, and... Lo and behold, we have a frying pan, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, we can now cook our meat. It is a sweet, sweet, nice thing. I guess we talk to Sarah now? Doesn't look like there's been anyone in this... Oh, let's Doesn't look it. like there's been anyone in this house for a while. All I found was a locked chest. Unless you have the key or a talent for picking locks, it's going to stay locked. I've opened it. What? I've opened the chest. Find anything useful? Just a frying pan. Everything else is junk. Oh well, at least you can fry up that meat. Mm -hmm. I could do with a little fried meat right now. You're probably starving too. And we can pretend it's venison. Maybe I don't like venison. You ever think of that? Maybe I want to pretend it's chicken or, or cow or pig. Who knows? Alright, so looks like we can and did fry up the meat. Alright, oh, okay, so you actually spend the time to fry the meat, so you choose what you have and what you're going to make, this so good. you get to choose the end result. So I'm going to do that with all of my food, that way hopefully it gives me more oomph for my oomph. I think that's cooked. More bang for my buck. I think there's some meat laying on the ground. There is. Look, there's raw meat laying on the ground, all dirty. It's fine. We'll cook it up. No big deal. We don't care where the meat comes from, as long as we uh, can cook it. Brush it off. It's mm, fine. This smells good. And finally, some fish. And we now have I a lot of cooked meat. Cooked. There we go. Here's your fried meat. Here's your fried meat. At least if you don't think about where it came from. Hey, that's not bad. We should head further inland. You go on. I really need to rest. That storm took it out of me. I feel exhausted. I'm going to stay here for a while. Oh, I see how it is. Okay. I'll come back and get you when I know a bit more about this place. Don't worry about me. Be careful out there. I saw a path to the north. It looks like it led further inland. Maybe there's a village or something up there. Ooh, chapter one, the Forbidden Island. And now officially the game starts. So we're done with the prologue. We kind of know how to move around and do stuff. And it is time to begin our adventure fresh, new, excited, and ready. Um, I don't know. I think she's crazy. I mean, we've already seen bad stuff happening. There's a blood smear on the wall there. There's a blood splatter there. Something clearly went bad inside this place. There's blood all over the floor. We've looted the place. It's pretty run down. There's random wolves and things wandering around. Oh, I'll be fine. Just leave me here. Really? 
That, that really? That's what we're gonna go with? We're just, we're just gonna leave you here, huh? Okay. Well, if you say so. I'm, I'm not gonna be one to, to question, I guess. But it's, yeah, it's a little weird. All right, we're gonna take one final swig of the water. We're gonna get toward the correct path. I did not know I could do that. Holy cow, I'm on the roof. Well, that's something new. Well, maybe not, but... Well, that's pretty cool, actually. I had no clue that I could do that. I really didn't. I did not know that was a total accident. And I'm floating. I actually meant to just click the barrel and drink. That way I get that little tiny bit of HP back. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed this thus far. It's uh, It starts a little slow, but I mean, most RPGs do. Most RPGs, you're fighting rats for like 40 minutes, and then eventually you're like, oh, I can, I can go up to dire rats or something horribly stupid and lame like that. But at least here you get to fight some wolves, and I fought some gnomes. I've, I've done some work so far. It's not too, too bad. I'm going to wander up the path a bit, guys, but I'm about to break off the episode. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe if you did. Hopefully I don't embarrass myself too much in this LP. And hopefully good things happen. Well, as you see, I'm going to get owned by this vulture. Oh, oh, mad skills. Nope, not mad enough. Boom, mad enough. All right, guys, that'll do it for me. Again, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share it. And hopefully this goes well, and you guys enjoy it, and, well, we get through it, and we get into the second one, and then as soon as the third one is out and available in my hands, ready to go, ready to play on my computer, I'm going to start up that LP immediately, and I guess I'll run the series side by side with itself, if that's okay with everyone, I would imagine it would be. That way you guys can see what the latest and greatest has to offer, and if you're excited about it, you can pick it up. Either way, that's going to do it, and I will catch you guys next time with more Risen. Until then, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums, and I will see you later. <laughs> <laughs>